Okay, so uh, so let's continue with our uh, with our discussion about the inverse function theorem. So uh, let me quickly recall: you start with the analytic function, analytic at a point z not. Assume that the first derivative at z not is non-zero. That means you are saying that uh, z not is a zero of order one of the function f of z minus w not, which is also a non-constant analytic function. And then you choose a disk centered at z not. Uh, radius rho such that on the closed disc z0 is the only 0 of f z minus w0 and uh, on the boundary of the disc uh, f z uh, minus w0 does not vanish so if you take its modulus that is bounded below by a certain delta and for this delta you look at all w such that mod w minus w0 is less than delta and the claim is that uh, uh, the uh, that f is uh, f is actually one to one on this disc, and the inverse of f is given by this formula. Okay, so what we'll what we have proved so far is that we have proved that f is one to one on that disc. We have proved that f assumes uh, every value w such that mod w minus w naught is less than delta. Uh, every such value is assumed by f in this disc centered at z naught radius rho. Okay. And uh, uh, which is a restatement of the fact that uh, 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 that f is one to one on this disc. Okay, uh, I I mean given the fact that the number of times it assumes uh, the value uh, f assumes the value w is exactly the same as number of times f assumes the value w not for any w, and but the number of times it assumes the value w not is one. Therefore, the number of times it assumes the value w is also 1 okay. So you get uh, uh, both the uh, uh, you get the 1 to 1 nature, uh, nature of f okay. Now the only thing that I have to show is that uh, this is the this formula for f inverse w is correct okay. So I let me uh, let me try to explain uh, at least the the logic behind that formula okay. So you know our, our so let us go back to this uh, so, so let us go back to this diagram see you have on the so you have on the uh, on the uh, on the z plane we have this point z0 and we have this disc uh, centered at z0 radius rho okay and then on the on the complex plane that is given by the omega w plane okay again we have this this other disc centered at w0 radius delta we have we have this disc okay and of course f of z0 is equal to w0 okay and f inverse is f inverse is kind of uh, you know defined uh, from here to here this is f inverse okay it is at least defined uh, it is at least defined properly as a function because f is 1 to 1 restricted to this to, to this disc all right and um, think uh, for a moment as to why this formula why should you able be able to you know expect such a formula first of all uh, you should get a feeling for why you should get a formula like that okay. So what I am trying to say is see do the following thing choose I mean uh, it is uh, I just want to say that this formula is a uh, it is just Cauchy's integral formula for f inverse if you look at it very carefully. So you see what is so let me uh, so let me you know go back and uh, uh, let me rub this off so that I can use this side of the board and let us for a moment you know uh, uh, recall uh, the Cauchy integral formula the, the, the you know the first order Cauchy integral formula or the 0th order Co Cauchy integral formula okay the first of the integral formulas you see suppose you have so this is a Cauchy integral formula what is the Cauchy integral formula. So you know you assume that f not let me not use like f, f let me use h okay 
uh, and let me use some other variable ok. So, let me use uh, instead of using z let me use uh, 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 neta ok h neta uh, analytic or holomorphic analytic function of eta on uh, and inside a simple closed contour gamma in the in the in the neta plane. So, you see the diagram is something like this I have the complex plane and I the variable is neta so I am calling it the neta plane ok I am purposely using neta because I do not want to use z ok and there is some well there is some simple closed contour uh, gamma ok and mind you uh, so it is so it is a uh, it is a closed curve it is simple that means it has no self intersections and it is a uh, contour means that it is piecewise smooth that is it is the continuous image of an interval uh, that is what it is to say that it is a path or a continuous path further you want it to be piecewise smooth which means that if you parameterize uh, that then as a function of the parameter it should be not only differentiable but the derivative with respect to the parameter should be continuous and that should be at least piecewise continuous on the interval ok that is what it means. So, mind you all this is needed to be able to do the path integral on a contour ok. So, uh, then you know if I take a point neta naught here ok what is Cauchy integral formula it says that uh, if you calculate 1 by 2 pi i integral over comma of h of eta d eta by eta minus eta naught what will you get you will simply get h of eta naught ok. This is the Cauchy integral form this is the first Cauchy integral form right. Of course, if you differentiate both sides with respect to eta naught and you allow the differentiation to go past the integral sign you will get the successive higher Cauchy integral formulas ok which will tell you that the higher derivatives at eta naught are expressible in terms of this integral with uh, 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 a, a, a factorial appearing on top and then you will have higher powers of eta neta minus neta naught appearing in the denominator ok alright. So, let us apply this to our situation in our situation we are on the uh, we are on the w plane ok and on the w plane there is that there is that point z naught I am sorry there is a point w naught and there is that disc centered at w naught radius delta ok and we are having this function f inverse of w you are having this function f inverse of w. You see finally, we are going to our aim is to show that f inverse w is an analytic function ok of w that is our aim ok and then you have to show that the analytic function is given by this formula this is what we want to prove. But for a moment to get an idea as, as to how this formula came the first place let us assume that f inverse w is actually an analytic function of w ok. Then see take the w here take a w here ok and what you do is well you know uh, uh, see it is it is uh, as as I uh, as I explained here uh, the image of this disc contains the disc centered at w naught and radius w ok. In fact it will also contain uh, uh, more or less it will contain the boundary of the disc ok and what I want to say is for example you know if I take if I take a small uh, uh, curve here gamma surrounding w ok and if you believe that f, that f inverse w is an analytic function of w 
and what then what will the Cauchy integral formula give you for f inverse w it will tell you that if I take 1 by 2 pi i and integrate over gamma uh, f inverse dub f inverse of e neta d neta by neta minus w I am supposed to get f inverse of w this is just the Cauchy integral formula the Cauchy integral formula says that uh, mind you whenever I write this neta the d neta where the moment I write d neta neta is a dummy variable who which which lies on the on gamma okay. So I did not want to write f inverse w d w because I want to put then I will have to put w minus w which does not make sense I, I wanted w here so I have changed the dummy, dummy variable to neta okay and this is uh, this is just the Cauchy integral formula which is valid provided uh, f inverse is analytic function of w okay now you do the following thing you put put zeta to be f inverse neta you put this if you put zeta equal to f inverse neta what you will get is th th that means that f of zeta is neta all right and it will mean that uh, d neta will be f dash of zeta d zeta so f dash of zeta d zeta will be d neta okay if you write it like this symbolically the element of uh, integration okay and you know this then this formula you know uh, mind you f is of course f is analytic and I assumed f inverse also is analytic therefore f and f inverse are isomorphisms mind you okay they are isomorphisms and therefore uh, what I am doing is I am simply in this uh, in this integral I can make a change of variable if I make a change of variable what will happen to that integral that integral after change of variable will simply become uh, uh, I will get the following thing so let me write it here you will get f inverse of w is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral so now you see I am changing the variable from neta to zeta okay and now since neta uh, lies in the w plane f inverse neta will lie in the z plane so zeta will lie in the z plane okay so what will happen is that I will have to take f inverse of this curve. okay I am making a change of variable in my integration and if I plug it here I will get uh, uh, so let me plug it here f inverse zeta so I this will become zeta f dash of zeta d zeta divided by neta is f zeta minus w okay and if you look at it this is the same as this formula here that is the same formula that has appeared here only thing is that the boundary curve that I have taken which should be f inverse gamma is actually the is simply the circle centered at z naught radius rho with the positive orient orientation of course okay and uh, that this can be replaced by that uh, that f inverse gamma can be replaced by this bo this boundary curve is justifiable because in in the in the region between the two curves there are going to be no singularities okay the the, the, the version of Cauchy theorem says that between two curves one containing inside the other if there are no singularities then the integral over the smaller curve is the same as the integral over the bigger curve okay so in principle I can actually replace this f inverse gamma by mod z minus z not equal to rho you must understand that since f inverse is uh, analytic okay since f inverse is 1 to 1 f inverse of gamma will also be a simple closed curve because it is 1 to 1 continuous and it is conformal it is analytic so this will also be a curve simple closed curve it will also be a simple closed contour okay and the fact is that this can be replaced by that okay. 
So the moral of the story is that if you assume that f inverse w is analytic as a function of w then it is very clear how this formula comes this formula is not mysterious okay you can derive it in this sense it is just another avatar of the Cauchy integral formula for f inverse w okay that removes the mystery out of this formula. Now what you do is now that is just to you know psychologically uh, satisfy you that this is not something mysterious this is something that you can guess very easily okay so there are two things in mathematics one thing is to guess the right formula then the second thing is of course to really prove it without any uh, you know gaps without hand waving so now we have to prove this formula that you have to prove that this is the correct formula that can be done in a completely different way once you believe the formula you can always find so many ways to prove it so the psychological difficulty is always in trying to first of all believe that a certain formula is true okay so that is also very very important so that is what I uh, demonstrated now. So let us come back to proving this formula so um, so let me so maybe I will uh, let me go somewhere for example mm, okay so let me rub this off so that I can use this part of the board I do not need this any any more let, let me continue here okay so uh, let us try to prove this to prove uh, f inverse of w W minus W not less than delta. Okay, this is what you have to prove. This is the this is the inversion formula. This is what you want to prove. Okay. The proof is pretty easy because you look at the function zeta f dash of zeta by f of zeta minus W. Look at this function. Look at this function for uh, mod zeta minus z dot strictly less than or equal to rho look at this function look at this function on this closed disc okay that means I am taking the boundary curve and uh, also the interior on this you if you see this is an analytic function except for a simple pole at zeta equal to z see it is analytic in this closed disc except uh, except for a simple I should not say with except for for a simple pole at this point see that function is analytic on the closed disc the only place where it will lose analyticity is when the denominator vanishes and the denominator will, will vanish exactly at zeta equal to z okay and why that is because zeta equal to at zeta equal to z f of zeta is f of z which is equal to w and therefore the denominator is 0 that means z is a 0 of f of zeta minus w but 0 of what order it is 0 of order 1 because f is 1 to 1 it is so it is only 0 of order 1 okay therefore it is a 0 of order 1 of the denominator so it is a simple pole so it is a function that has a simple pole at only one point in the closed disc every other point is analytic now what is the residue theorem the residue theorem says that you take a if you integrate a function over a boundary curve and divide by 2 pi i okay then you will simply get sum of residues of f at the poles so by by the residue theorem by the residue theorem 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z not equal to rho of zeta f dash of zeta d zeta by f of zeta minus w is actually the residue of the function zeta f dash of zeta by f of zeta minus w at the point uh, z because z is the only pole 
and it is a simple pole and what is the residue at the simple pole uh, it is by uh, taking a limit as z as the variable tends to the pole of the function multiplied by the variable minus the pole ok. So, if you calculate this this is actually limit uh, uh, zeta tends to z zeta minus z multiplied by this function zeta f dash of zeta by f of zeta minus w ok and if you compute this is actually equal to z ok that will show that the value of this is equal to z in other words uh, the value of this is equal to z which is f inverse w and your formula is proved ok. Why is the value equal to z? It is very simple you can write it out that is pretty easy to see this is actually limit uhhh zeta tends to z you see I will get zeta f dash of zeta by let me group this f zeta minus f of z because w is f of z mind you divided by zeta minus z zeta tends to z ok. But limit zeta tends to z of this is precisely f dash of zeta it is uhhh it is f dash of uhhh uh, yeah limit zeta tends to this is f dash of z ok and limit zeta tends to z of the numerator is z f dash of z. So, what I will get is th this will just be z f dash of z by f dash of z that will simply be z and that calculation is valid because f dash of z is not 0 f dash is non zero ok. So, uh, that is uh, that is something that you will have to uh, convince yourself that f dash is non zero uh, should be obvious ok. So, you if you cancel f dash of z out you will get z and that proves this formula ok. And uh, so, uh, so we get uh, f inverse w is z is this 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z not equal to rho zeta f dash of zeta t zeta by f of zeta minus w you get this. So, you get this formula the inversion formula ok. Now, the only thing that you will have to worry about is the statement that uh, f inverse uh, is an analytic function of w for w lying inside this disc and so in other words you have to show f inverse of w is actually uh, a differentiable function of w for w lying in that disc centered at w naught and radius delta ok and in fact the proof that it is uh, differentiable in that disc is uh, you know it is a it is the same kind of technique that we have already seen it is the same kind of technique that we proved uh, uh, we I mean which we used to prove that uh, n of w uh, that we defined uh, in the proof of the open mapping theorem the function n of w which is just the number of times the function f assumes the value w we proved n of w is actually an analytic function of w it is the same technique that you have you that you have to use to show that f inverse w as defined like this is an analytic function for w analytic function of w for of course uh, mod w minus w naught lesser than delta ok. This is something that uh, that can be shown right. So, uh, let me outline that so that is the only thing that is left out to show that f inverse is an analytic function of w ok. So, probably I will write uh, the now I can let now let me uh, rub off this uh, uh, so so let me write here it remains to show show the f inverse is an analytic function. Okay. 
this is what is uh, this is the only thing that needs to be proved. Uh, mind you uh, that f inverse is already continuous you know why that is because you see uh, f is already an open map ok we have f is a non constant analytic function we have already seen in an earlier lecture that a non constant analytic function is an open mapping. So, the f is an open map but when f is an open map it means that if f has an inverse that f inverse is continuous. So, the continuity of f inverse is already there so you should you must remember that because of the open mapping theorem f inverse is continuous already that is already there ok. Now we will uh, now we can prove the analyticity of f inverse with respect to w ok that can be done as follows. So, let me just indicate what needs to be proved and then uh, we can I mean you can uh, fill out the details. So, uh, so you know uh, let us uh, instead of using uh, instead of calling this function as f inverse w let us give it some other name let me call it as h of w so that it is easier to write. So, put put h of w is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral mod z minus integral of zeta minus z naught equal to root zeta f dash of zeta d zeta by f zeta minus w for mod w minus w naught strictly less than delta put this ok. Uh, recall that uh, that is here uh, mod of f zeta uh, minus w naught is always greater than or equal to delta for zeta minus z naught equal to rho I mean this is how we chose uh, the delta first and then and and then uh, I mean we first chose the rho and then the delta uh, after that and this is how we chose ok rho and delta. Now what do I have to show I will have to show that h is an analytic function of w ok. So, what I will do is I will have to calculate h of I will have to calculate I will have to show limit uh, w delta w tends to 0 h of w plus delta w minus h of w by delta w exists. I have to show that this limit exists for for all for for every w with mod w minus w naught lesser than delta this is what I have to show. If I show this I am showing that h is differentiable on the disc mod w minus w naught less than delta and that the fact that the functions are differentiable at every point in a disc means that it is analytic in the disc because analytic is basically differentiable once at every point in an in a neighborhood of a given point right. But what is this quantity this is this quantity ok uh, so uh, for those of you uh, who are watching this lecture an exercise is to just stop at this point. Uh, and then uh, just recall how we proved the function n of w is analytic in the uh, in the case of the proof of the open mapping theorem and literally follow the same ideas ok. But anyway let me continue. So, what is this quantity this quantity is if you calculate it is uh, in so it is 1 by 2 pi i and then there is a delta w uh, and I will get integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho and I will get uh, zeta f dash of zeta. Uh, so, there is a zeta f dash zeta is a common fact it is a common term. So, what I will get is I will get simply get 1 by f of zeta minus w plus delta w minus 1 by f zeta minus w this whole thing into zeta f dash of zeta d zeta. This is what this difference will be. 
and if you compute it it will be 1 by 2 pi i delta w well uh, if I take LCM then I am going to end up with integral mod z minus z naught is equal to rho I am going to get a delta w on top zeta f dash of zeta d zeta divided by uh, f zeta minus w minus delta w into f zeta minus w okay and uh, then uh, since delta w has got nothing to do with the variable of integration zeta okay so I can cancel this delta w out and what I will get is I will get 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z naught equal to rho of zeta f dash of zeta t zeta over uh, product of these two terms f zeta minus w minus delta w into f zeta minus w okay and what I am supposed to show is that the limit of this quantity as that delta, delta w tends to 0 exists okay you if one is very naive one can one will pass the let the limit pass through the integral and if you apply the limit if you allow the limit to go inside the integral okay which is not always possible but if you naively do it what will happen is that the limit will be 1 by 2 pi a integral over mod z minus z naught equal to rho zeta f dash of zeta d zeta over f zeta minus w the whole square that is what you will get which is the expression that you will get if you take this and differentiate it with respect to w if you what is h dash of w is differentiation of h of w with respect to w so you have to differentiate this with respect to w okay that means you have, you have to apply d by d w to this expression but then you know allow naively the d by w to pass through the integral if you allow that then you will be only differentiating the uh, the what is the, the, the integrand and the variable with which you are differentiating is w which is which is different from the variable of integration okay so if you differentiate this uh, this integrand with respect to w you will simply get zeta f dash of zeta by f of zeta minus w the whole square that is what you are going to get and that is what you are getting here if you let the uh, limit delta w tend to 0 pass into the integral okay so the moral of the story is from here how do you prove that uh, the limit of this as delta w tends to 0 is this expression with f zeta minus w the whole square the denominator okay so let me write that out uh, so let me get rid of this so that I can use that part of the board see we we claim uh, h dash of w is actually 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho into differentiate the integrand with respect to w which is zeta f dash of zeta d zeta over f zeta minus w the whole square we claim this is this okay so in other words you are claiming the limit as delta w tends to 0 of this quantity is that that is limit delta w tends to 0 of 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho of uh, this quantity which is zeta f dash of zeta d zeta over f zeta minus w minus delta w times f zeta minus w is equal to this quantity which is 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho of zeta f dash of zeta d zeta over f of zeta minus w the whole square this is what you are claiming so you have to show the limit of this quantity is equal to this which is effectively differentiating under the integral sign and I told you that that is uh, always possible in Cauchy theory I mean that is the whole point about studying analytic functions okay. In fact I told you that Cauchy integral formula itself is a example of differentiating under the integral sign the higher Cauchy integral formulas are gotten from the first Cauchy integral formula by the literally differentiating under the integral sign and all this is possible because you are working with analytic functions.
that is the whole philosophy. So, so you see I have to show limit of this quantity equal to this ok, but now how do you prove that the trick is you absorb this also to the left side and show that the limit of the difference is 0 ok and why I can absorb this into the limit is because this has got nothing to do with the limit, the limit is with respect to delta w going to 0 and this has got no delta w term. So, that is you have to show limit delta w tends to 0 of if I absorb it onto the left side I will get 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho of uh, uh, if I take this minus this ok if I take LCM what I will end up with is uh, I think uh, uh, I will get a delta w uh, into zeta into f dash of zeta into d zeta divided by uh, uh, f zeta minus w minus delta w times uh, f zeta minus w the whole squared is 0 this is what it will be it will turn out to be ok because if you push this uh, whole term inside the limit on the left side ok and then take the integral out and if you take zeta f dash zeta d zeta out and you take LCM this is what you will get ok. So, uh, and which is again which is again correct because if you again naively let limit delta w tend to 0 inside the integral ok there is a delta w on top. So, the integrand will vanish therefore the integral is 0 integral of a 0 integrand is 0 if you want to think of it like that. So, this is again still you know uh, it is still about trying to pass the limit into the integral that is what you must appreciate I mean, uh, but we have simplified it to a very nice uh, level. But so, but now what you do is to show that the limit of something is 0 you show you use now you go back to basic analysis and say when is the limit of one quant a certain quantity equal to 0 as delta w tends to 0 you use the epsilon delta condition you say that given an epsilon greater than 0 you can make the modulus of this quantity smaller than epsilon provided you choose uh, delta sufficiently small such that mod delta w can be made less than delta so provided you can find such a delta ok. So, you go to the epsilon delta definition of a limit and that leads you to estimate this integral ok and to estimate the integral you use the ML formula which is the uh, which is the formula which says that modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the modulus. So, if you if you apply that well uh, let me let me quickly write that out it is pretty easy. So, what you do is you do the following thing you just uh, you just estimate let us estimate this modulus of 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho of this guy uh, delta w uh, zeta f dash of zeta t zeta by f zeta minus w minus delta w into f zeta minus w the whole squared modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the modulus. So, it is 1 by 2 pi integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho ok mod delta w and I uh, will get uh, uh, mod uh, zeta mod f dash of zeta mod d zeta by mod uh, mod f of zeta minus w minus delta w into mod f zeta minus w the whole square ok I will get this and the point you have to understand is that uh, uh, finally, the uh, if you if you look at uh, uh, see uh, mod of F Z. Uh, mod of f zeta minus w is uh, 
is bounded below by a certain delta w okay which is positive because you are on this boundary circle all right and uh, if you recall this is how we proceeded in the proof of the open mapping theorem and for mod delta w sufficiently small since mod of f zeta minus w minus delta w tends to a mod of f zeta minus w as delta w tends to 0 you can you can ensure that modulus of f zeta minus w minus delta w is also greater than or equal to delta w by 2 okay because if this is approaching this and this is greater than or equal to delta w so you can certainly make delta w small enough uh, i mean this is small little delta w okay as this uh, uh, this delta w approaches 0 okay that this is greater than or equal to small delta w uh, and that this approach is that will tell you that this also can be made lesser greater than or equal to half of that okay which is positive okay and then of course mod z mod zeta mod f dash of zeta they are both bounded mod zeta f dash of zeta is uh, is less than or equal to some m double prime on mod zeta minus z not equal to rho because z f dash of z is an analytic function f is analytic so f dash is analytic and z into f dash of z is also analytic and you are look so it is continuous so mod of that is continuous and you are looking at a continuous function on a compact set compact connected set so it has a minimum it has a maximum and this is the maximum value so it is bounded okay so what you will get is that so all this will tell you and if you integrate over mod zeta minus z not equal to rho mod d zeta you will simply get the uh, length of the arc namely the perimeter of the circle okay which is 2 pi rho so what you will get is you will get that uh, uh, this quantity is less than or equal to 1 by 2 pi into I will get a uh, this is greater than or equal to delta w so reciprocal of this is less than or equal to 1 by delta w and square of that will be 1 by delta w squared so this will curs and this will contribute to a 2 by delta w so I will get a 2 by delta w then I will get a 1 by delta w squared okay and then I will get uh, 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 of course uh, I will get a mod delta w on the numerator that will come out as it is and this mod zeta f dash of zeta will give rise to an m double prime and what is left out is integral of mod d zeta over this curve which is uh, 2 pi rho okay so which is which is actually constant times mod delta w this is what it is and that will go to 0 as delta w tends to 0 uh, that will go to 0 as delta w tends to 0 because this constant is independent of the triangular delta w okay so moral of the story is that the limit of this quantity as delta w as uh, triangular delta w goes to 0 is certainly 0 and that is what you wanted to prove and that completes the proof of the fact that uh, this function is an analytic function of w and that function is precisely f inverse w if you recall therefore this tells you that f inverse is an analytic function of w okay and that completes the proof okay so uh, so I will stop here.